we're going to shift gears very quickly to um, presentational communication. And the main thing that you need to think about in terms of scaffolding presentational communication is that there are lots of things that learners can produce and that you can have learners scaffold those with graphic organizers as well, that they need opportunities to brainstorm ideas. Research suggests that's one of the most difficult things for learners to do. One easy way to do that is using something like a picture walk where you give them different pictures and then learners take uh, a minute to jot down all of the words that they know related to that picture. Then they move to the next picture and a new group comes and adds their words. So that by the time you're done with two or three rounds, each of the pictures has lots of words on it and then learners can start using those as word banks to string sentences together to organize those into paragraphs or poems or stories, et cetera. When we're thinking about scaffolding in uh, presentational communication, we might think about things like providing learners with some kind of a little rubric that includes um, both the linguistic things that we want them to do and the pragmatic things that we want them to do. So are they only using single words to ask questions? Are they asking and answering questions just with, um, but forgetting a, a particular piece of the structure? Or are they asking and answering questions in complete sentences using a particular structure that we want them to say? How well are you understood? Do you have pragmatic elements included? So there are examples in the rest of this presentation about how you might scaffold the organization of a text once learners have brainstormed their ideas. So for example, if they're going to write us an adventure story, then I might do something like this where they're making choices that will help them to see the path for their story. So the adventure is going to take place in Spain or in Venezuela. They chose Venezuela. Okay, is it going to happen in the forest, an island, or the mountains? They chose the forest. Okay, what's going to be the big event? A dangerous animal, an interesting idea, a famous person, or a magic object? And they're going to choose. Okay, then what's going to happen? Will there be a party, a fight, a problem, a robbery, or a surprise? And so by working through that series of choices, you're giving some learners some basic language and also some structure that then helps them to generate um, the text. You can scaffold the organization of text using graphic organizers. Obviously, this is for an elementary classroom where they figure out what is the topic, what is the main idea, and then they put their details um, on the teeth inside because that's what gives teeth to the writing. For more advanced learners, like university level learners, I might do something like asking students to answer a question in Spanish. For you, what is love? Then they're gonna make some predictions about the text by, giving, by me giving them the poem they're supposed to be reading and having them fill in the blanks. Amor said, the, or love said the rose is blank. Love said blank, you know, love is blank, said the, you know, drop of water. Then after they've filled in their predictions, I give them the real poem. And so they're reading the text to check their predictions. So they've interacted with the structure of the poem before they've ever read the whole poem in a creative way. And the original text becomes a mentor text or provides a model of the structure that learners are gonna to use to write their own similar clone poem. I can have learners take pinches of text that I've cut up out of an article that they've read and reorganize them to form their own poems, their own interpretations. And those are just minor examples of different ways that you can sequence production of writing. They can use foldables. There are great websites about that. They can produce ideas or brainstorm ideas and sequencing of their text with concept maps. Um, or I can give them little formulas. Uh, argumentative texts are, and then they fill in the blank. They have to be, and then they have two choices, so that, and then it has a list. So I can have them structuring their own 
syn synthesis or summary based on um, the, te the text that I give them. And even beginning learners are capable of writing really powerful texts. Um, and so I think we will conclude with this particular one. This is a poem that a Spanish two high school student wrote. Um, and she talks about, and this was after a uh, project about migrant workers. And so she was supposed to write her, kind of her own poem about her own experiences as a child. And she said, my father left when I was young and my mother and I were alone. I learned to be independent and I took care of myself. Then my little sister was born. I was six years old and she was more my child than my sister. Um, when she was sick, I didn't go to school. I learned to be responsible. We began to move to different places. And while I was in elementary school, I learned how to adapt. Um, and now I've learned how to survive. Now you'll see if you speak Spanish, there are some grammatical mistakes here, but she's used quite a bit of language to say the things that are meaningful to her. And I think that is really the goal of everything that we are doing in our projects is to give learners structured opportunities to move, talk, and communicate about things that matter to them. Um, and so as you think about the different strategies you've been exposed to today, think about what is your very next step? What is one thing that you might do in order to make it easier for learners to access information? to talk with one another about that information or to think through its implications for their own lives? And then how could you structure opportunities for them to share what they've learned?